do a screen share and let's go through you know, what we're going to talk about today, you know, we've this is uh, class four of the short sale series that we've been doing here with the Freedom Team and EXP. We've gone through deficiencies, loans coming due, less pendants. And today I'm going to cover property maintenance cases because this is something that most people never even think of and they don't even realize how quickly uh, or how easy it is to obtain this information. But before we dive into that, let's kind of go through what we've covered. So if anybody has missed any of this four part short sale series, class one, we learned how to find short sale opportunities, many, many different ways. We understood what less pendants filings are and other ways to gain short sale listing business. Class two, we learned how to, to list short sale properties protect the clients and ourselves, but also properly represent the short sale to the public and, and to the lender so that we can actually close short sale transactions, not only successfully, but quickly, okay? That was class two. Class three, we learned the value of the title company's role as it relates to short sale and making sure you have a great partner in the title business that is there for you to help you through these transactions and to help through the process. Why run a preliminary title? And then we also got some great, great statistics as to what the future of our current market looks like as it relates to the loan servicing companies and the amount of billions of dollars of loans on homes that were, you know, done within the last couple of years. And so that's a, all of these, I think, have been tremendously great classes. And so please do watch those and, and revisit those. Today, we're going to focus on something extremely simple. And, and um, there's going to be a lot of people in the real estate industry that are going to say, well, why do I want to do that? And I thought the same thing back many, many years ago when I started to do this. And then I realized really how much money there was in doing exactly this. And so today we're going to talk about how do we find code violation and property maintenance cases. And it's really simple. I'm not going to have slides today because I'm going to show you exactly how this process works. And along the way, please remember, I want this to be a, a, a class that we interact. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to, to you know, put comments in the chat and make sure you pause and ask questions so that you totally and thoroughly understand this. But really quickly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Google. I love Google, right? This is free information. Everybody's market's a little bit different. Everybody's government is a little bit different, but here is the truth. Property maintenance cases are all public record. You just have to figure out where to go to find that. And no better way to do that than I'm going to go with my market today, you all. For those that don't know, I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. So, oh, look, there's one of my searches there. Louisville, Kentucky property maintenance cases. I'm going to simply Google it. That's all I'm going to do. Oh, look at the first link here. Property maintenance, LouisvilleKentucky.gov. I'm going to click it. This is all public records. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna hit search property maintenance issues in Louisville. Now, when I get into this, this is how our city does it. And this is how most cities do this because this service that I'm getting into, one, it's free, two, they service 98% of all cities in America. So if they've built this for Louisville, Kentucky, they've probably built this for your city as well, all right? But again, that's going to be on you to figure out how you find this in your city, your area. Now, you do have an account that you're going to create for this. I, I have an account. It's free. I don't pay for anything. I registered one time and each time I'm logging in, right? And what I'm specifically interested in today are those property maintenance cases. I want to know who is out there with dilapidated property, or maybe they've had a gutter off their house for quite some time, you know, maybe they've got garbage all over the place, you know, there's a reason as to why people have their properties in, in certain disarrays. And so what I want to look for today is enforcement, okay? Now, I'm going to wow you for a second. In my opinion, I'm at least going to wow you because you think, okay, well, how many property maintenance cases are really out there? Well, I'm going to come down here and I am going to search from, let's go back to 
January, well, we'll keep the date the same. And then I'm gonna change this to 2023. So I'm gonna go back to January 22nd, 2023 to March 22nd of 2023, okay? And I'm gonna hit the search. Now I've got every single property maintenance case that is active in Louisville, Kentucky. Now this shows 100 plus, we've got well over 10 pages. And I did this earlier, you all, just so I knew without having to scroll on the, on the um, screen today, there's almost 17,000 property maintenance issues happening currently in my city of Louisville, Kentucky. And it's everything from trash to vacant and abandoned property to, um, you know, uh, people haven't mowed their grass and there's weeds growing up. There's all kinds of things. But there's many of other circumstances, too, where these cases tend to reside or, or why they get called upon. And it could be they're a tenant reporting their landlord because their heat isn't working and it hasn't worked. And so I've got one here that I opened up earlier today. And this property at 13409 Vendetta Way, 40245, which Tim and TJ are in my market, they know what great of a zip code that is, right? This, this tenant has reported yet again that her heat has not been working since November. Don't you think that landlord's got an issue, right? So this is letting our eyes see a different version of issues that exist. We focused on people that haven't been paying their mortgages, right? We focused on people that owe people money. Now we're going to shift our focus to people that may be cash rich, but they aren't maintaining their properties. And there's always a reason why they're not. Um, and that's the big thing when it comes to this. And this is why, you know, you talk about low hanging fruit. This is the lowest amount of hanging fruit. I love doing these cases because, you know, they're phenomenal. You get to uncover opportunities that don't always, you know, hit you right in the face. Okay. Now, what I typically like to do is I'll scroll through this list. In the beginning, I would scroll through this list and I would look at those streets that I knew were high dollar, fast turning, great opportunities to either list, buy, figure out what was going on. And I only focused on those. Then there got to be so many of these, okay, that it was just better to come up here, hit this download results button let it go into a CSV file of 16,998 property cases and just mass blast them all. And, and, you know, it's like taking everything you've got, throwing at the wall and seeing what sticks. Your phone will ring off the hook, especially if you're marketing them in a way that's going to get them a little bit outraged. And we'll go through that here in a second. But the biggest reason why I focus on these types of properties is, as you all might have heard me say last week, my son is 23 years old. He owns an entire city block. When he first got into real estate about a year ago, he said, Mom, what can I do first? Because he didn't want to just reside on Stephanie Gillison's coattails, okay? He wanted to build his own career. He wanted to build his own wealth. And so I said, I tell you what, Dylan, I spent 15 minutes with him and I showed him how to do this. He hired a VA in some country. He pays them $200 a month and he markets to these people. He has bought up personally several different properties to now he owns an entire city block, okay? So that's one. He's a property owner of over 10 properties. Two, he's listed properties off of this because there's a lot of opportunity here to get property sold. And the biggest reason is, is that it's, it's starting that conversation. Hey, look, Mr. Seller, I see you own the property at 165 Pope Street. You know, Pope Street's a desirable street here in Louisville. What's the deal? What's the deal? And, you know, let's see what the problem is on Pope Street. So I pulled this up. 
Pope Street's had this gutter falling off and it looks like they've taken a tree limb and, and kind of held up the roof on the house there, right? Pope Street's a great street. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars on Pope Street. Nobody called Pope Street today. I'm calling them, okay? Just, no, I'm teasing. But, you know, this is where the, that opportunity lies because when you look at this street and, and you'll do this in your market too, and you'll identify these types of problems and you'll know that this is a sure thing. And so what's the situation with this, with this property? Well, here's the situation. This owner is not in Louisville, Kentucky and has absolutely no clue what's going on with the property. It's a rental. OK, he's probably got a, 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 a maybe he doesn't maybe he does have a property manager that's not doing these drive bys. And so majority of the time, people don't know what's going on with their properties. OK, but in the meantime, these notices might be just getting sent to. His address on Pope Street, he has no idea he's racking up three, four, five, six thousand dollars worth of fines because he hasn't corrected this problem. So, you know, Mr. Seller, you probably don't know this. I know that you've got a tenant in there, but you know, you've got multiple violations happening at 165 Pope Street. I also want to inform you that that's one of the most desirable streets going on right now. I don't want you to fix anything, but I want to list that property. Let's go ahead and cash in. Let's let the next person come in and put this property back together before you incur any more fines, liens, and a potential foreclosure because they will have the right to foreclose on him as well, okay? And so these are the types of, of ways that you can drive those types of conversations to gain more business. I want to pause there answer any questions. I'm not seeing the chat. So if there's anything in the chat, Diana, let me know. Any questions? The chat is empty. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, I have Anybody? a question. Yeah, I Jacob. got a question. How do you data mine this information? 17,000 contacts. Uh, well, in this site, uh, and again, you'll have to look at what you've got in Providence and Boston. I'm sure you've got something very similar, but I'm going to hit this button right here and it's going to download everything into a, a record list uh, CSV file for me. And I'm going to throw out everything that sticks. Okay, where'd okay? you find the violation? Where'd you actually find that sheet uh, for the violation? That you well, here, here's here's the violations here, okay? so So remember, what I did in my city is... I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. I Googled Louisville KY property maintenance cases. When I did that, this site came up. I clicked the link and it's brought me into this Louisville Metro business portal. Now that I'm in here, I am selecting enforcement cases. Okay. okay. I'm no, I mean, the, uh, the, actual, the actual form that you were showing in, uh, I don't know if it was a, uh, PowerPoint or whatever, you're showing the form that actually showed the picture of the gutter and all that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So look, you click here on the link of the property in the list okay. that populated up. And then in here is where you're able to click on more details. Sometimes it's in, you know, different, different, you know, information, but you go up here to record info, attachments. Oh, hold on. Let me do this. Record info. We're going to see related records and then boom, I'm gonna click on these and I'm going to view it. And it's telling me exactly what's wrong with the property as well. And it opens as a PDF. So let me open the PDF for you again. That's what I So here's, there here's the go. situation. Page two, it's showing us the issues. This is the letter that went to the owner of this property. Look, I love this. Notice a violation. Please fix your property, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So then when we think about the marketing efforts of that, and now listen, you all, this is something that you got to figure out what you're comfortable in doing. This is something that, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of lower end potentially, but there's also going to be some greatness. Um, you know, I'm going to share a story with you because it, one, it'll knock your socks off. But so what I did back in the day is every single person that made this list, every single person that made this list received this in the mail. And it said, 
your property made the naughty Metro liens list. Metro liens are piling up due to you not maintaining your property. I told it like it was and I hit them in the gut right out of the gate. I gave them options. Option one, I can list and sell your proper property, negotiate the liens and potentially put money back into your pocket. Option two, now don't give them option two if you can't do this. I have money. Rule number one, I have money. I can buy their property, pay cash, and close extremely quickly. But if you don't have that ability, don't advertise that. And then option three is they do nothing and find themselves facing numerous lawsuits and owing thousands of dollars in fines, right? I don't want any upfront money. I just want to help them solve their problem. And then on the back of this card, it basically went through the processes and the steps because some of these people will have unpaid mortgages, right? So they're not worried about these property maintenance liens or fines or violations because they're not even paying their mortgage. So I do bring up that, that factor of it. You know, if, if, if they owe a mortgage, that's our specialty too. If they owe more on their property than they feel it's worth, that's our specialty too. Doesn't mean you just abandon it. I don't know about your towns, but you know, at one point in time, and it's probably very close to this now, but I know in, in 2011, Louisville, Kentucky had 4,318 vacant and abandoned properties throughout some of the city areas of Louisville, Kentucky. I wanted to be a solve to that because I wanted to clean the city up, right? So how do we do that? Well, we first got to get a hold of the property owners and figure out why they abandoned the property to begin with. And then two, offer up the services so we could start cleaning it up, right? And getting new investment into the city. And so this advertisement, which you need to make it your own, and this is old, and nobody text or call that phone number because it's really not my phone number, okay? Just so you know. But I would send this out and, and get, my phone would ring off the hook. I mean, we had so many people because nobody was marketing or no other real estate broker was doing anything like this, okay? Nobody was going after this, these opportunities. And so it created an entire revenue stream in commission money and property investment that I never even planned on having. It was that drastic because when you get to this, you're talking about volume. You're talking about, you're not doing one or two of these, you're doing hundreds of these, right? And so this card ends up there was a lady, her name's Judith Rosenberg. Anybody can call her and, and, and say, tell me, tell me about Stephanie Gillison because one day, one week, she got over 400 of these from me, okay? I think it was 411 to be exact. And anyway, because she's getting piles of these in her mailbox, she picks up the phone and calls me and she's pissed, guys. She's angry. Because I'm basically telling her that every property she owns has deferred maintenance and is deteriorating. But that's all I know because she's made this naughty list 411 times, which is why she got all of these, these postcards from me. So anyway, she calls me and she says, look, what are you doing and who do you think you are? And I said, well, I'm a real estate broker here in Louisville. I care about Louisville, Kentucky. And, you know, part of the problem with Louisville, Kentucky is scattered throughout the city. We have dilapidated properties. And you know what? Per, per, the, per the list that got published by Metro Louisville, you've got 411 of them. So if I can convince you to start maintaining your property, then, hey, we're going to solve a big portion of what's going on. If you don't have the, the money or the wheelhouse to fix these properties up, it's time for you to sell them. It's time for you to sell them and allow somebody who does. I can afford them. I mean, she's mad and angry at me, right? She can afford them. She's an attorney. She's this, she's that. I said, Miss Rosenberg, that might be the case. But right now, you appear to be the biggest slumlord that I know. And there's got to be a way to solve this. And so she said, I tell you what, you come by my house this Friday noon. We'll, we'll discuss what your plan is. And so I told my assistant in that moment, I said, I want 411 listing contracts on all of these properties. When I go there, I'm taking them with me. Of course, my assistant wanted to lose her mind because that was a lot of work to may or may not get 
the business, right? But I don't care. I wanted to go there. I wanted to be prepared. Just like Rosenberg received all of those postcards in the mail, I was showing up prepared to do what I do, list real estate. I ring that doorbell. I've got all these file folders. I'm carting them, guys. I'm, I'm literally having to pull them in like a little wagon. She goes, I am not signing anything. I said, I'm not here for you to sign anything, but I am here prepared like I show up to do business everywhere. Two and a half hours later, she signed every one of those listings. I listed 411 properties in one day and it cost me nothing but the postage and the printing as to what it cost to send these things out. And it was because that was the first time anybody ever told her in writing, but also to her face, that she had no business being a landlord. And it was time to get those properties sold. And so that's why I bring this up because it's another way for you to build a business, a true real estate business, volume for you to make money. Once you're making money, then you can absolutely take that money and start buying some of these properties yourselves. You know, people always said to me, well, Stephanie, why don't you flip houses? Well, the truth is, is I do flip property. I just don't fix them up. You know, I'll buy property because there's an opportunity that I find on these lists. And then I'll, I might sell them, I might hold them, I might sell them, but I do flip property doing this. And there is a lot of people out there that truly abandon their properties, ignore the situation. That's why our cities look the way they do sometimes. Hello? But if you start solving the problem, again, you start, you start making money and opportunity. Any questions on that? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. At what well, point does this lead to for, foreclosure though? Or the, the liens just keep going and those fines just keep going? Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, here's the thing. If they don't do anything about paying off the fines, fixing the property, those liens keep coming. Those liens keep growing and ultimately the city then files the foreclosure because they want to get paid and um the you know already has your information too i mean that's at least you the homeowner already knows who you are that's right that's right and so you know this this is just another way to you know to not only find listing opportunities purchase opportunities maybe you're working with investors that can't find anything on the market well here's a great way to find them off market deals and actually make it you know work for them as well but another you know not all of these properties with the with the property maintenance cases fall into foreclosure or a short sale you know some do some don't you know, just like short sales will, you're negotiating with the bank. And let's say that, you know, that property is no longer worth what's owed to that lender. Well, you're doing a short sale. You're selling it short of what's owed. Well, in property maintenance cases, there's been times where I've seen 40 something thousand dollars worth of city liens because no one's corrected the property and they're, they keep piling up. The city doesn't have the 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 wherewithal. They're 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 backlogged. They they can't take any more properties into their possession, right? Because they're at their max, and so they won't foreclose on them on purpose because they don't want to own another asset that they've got to maintain. And so they're even willing to drop those fines and lower them just to get some money out of the deal. You know, what's what's king and queen in this world is information and knowledge is always your, your power. So what I did a long time ago is I said, okay, if Metro Louisville is gonna foreclose on a property that's boarded up, what's the next thing they do when they foreclose, all right? And so I, I studied this and I paid attention to it to make sure I was right. They take the property, and the first thing they do is they tear it down. So I said, okay, I wanna find out how much does it cost the city of Louisville to tear down one house? 
no, you know, sm these are little small houses, some big, you know, whatever. The smallest house, how much does it cost them? Back then, it was $16,800. $16,000 to tear down a house. And then you've got a vacant lot that might be worth $500. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I went to them and said, okay, you've got over 300 million in outstanding fines on these properties. What's your ratio? And they said to me, if you can get us, you know, 5% on some of these, we'll take it. And so when you find a property or let's say a whole city block, and let's say that entire city block, you know, the owner's vacant, they've abandoned it. They don't want it. So all you've got to do is find that owner and say, look, owner, sign, sign this to me. I, I, I will buy it for what you owe to the city, right? Okay, fine. I don't want it. They don't want any money. They, they, they've already written it off in their mind that they're never going to get a dime for that property because they owe so much in fines. Okay, they've agreed to sell it. Then you go to the city and say, okay, if I pay this today, how much will you take? And that's why if you're able to, to accomplish this, you can be a massive property owner for not a ton of money. And I'm not saying making that your number one priority, but that opportunity is out there too. And that's how you get to that level. Um, we've done this enough times and, and really paying attention to certain streets when one comes about available, to make sure that we're right on it because the more property I can get in a row, the bigger amount of land I own and the more I have the ability to redevelop the entire area, right? And so that's a, just another way to think. It's another way of, of, of a way to get listings, a way to solve problems. But for those who are looking to become investors, it's another way for you to invest. Any questions? At that point, it say say per se, you do uh, get a city block and mm -hmm. or, or five or six homes in an area. Um, have you ever then? Do you have a backup or say maybe another builder or somebody like that that might come in and do the demo and you know, I mean, being that all the utilities and everything are in place, especially if you're yeah. super involved, then you just say, look, I'll sell you this whole, because I got a buddy out, out here that does that. He's retired and all he does is buy land or develops and he just clears it all and gets it set up for somebody to come in and just build. That's right. That's absolutely right. Hmm. 100%. Wow. You think big, girl. <laughs> hey, look, you got to think big. You know, my very my my first broker I ever affiliated with uh, in 1999 when I got into real estate. He said that exact same thing, Paul. He said, "Stephanie, you think too big. You need to slow down." I said, "Buddy, humble pass you up, right?" And so, but these are the ways that you compete at a level and build true wealth, but also a real estate business. I mean, you know, this is why people ring my phone number because they know I know how to do something. Yeah. Clients, right? F future customers. This is the reputation I've built because I've gone out and I've solved this problem. I'm just glad to be affiliated with a company where now we can share these ideas and you all move it across the country. Whether you do it or not, that's okay, that's on you. But I'm giving you an idea of another way of doing business. I guess something happened to me a long time ago where I was never quite that interested in doing one-off listings. I never really was. I mean, eh, one listing, eh, another listing. I, I, I was always looking for something that I could build a real estate business with for a few years, you know, and have years worth of business and, and really master things that other people couldn't even think about. Jacob, ask your question out loud. My question is still on the da data mining. Yeah, you, you, know, you mentioned uh, 17,000, so I'm sorry I'm stuck there, you know. So, you know, I mean, yeah. where, I, where I am, there's 8 million people within 50 miles where I'm sitting, you know. So I can just imagine the insane numbers I'm going to find. Uh, how, how do you, how do we data mine that info? Is there a, is there a way of doing that? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, if we go back, 
if I go back to sharing my screen, okay, okay. Um, let me go back to sharing my screen and let me go back to, you know, our, our, our sheet here. So in Louisville, you know, I went back, what, two months, three months, uh, and there's almost 17,000. You know, you can pick and choose which of these are of interest, right? Um, you know, not all of these are going to be of interest. I, I'm a volume person. If I'm okay. going to do something, I'm going to throw it all out there and see what sticks. And so you don't have to, to solicit all of these people. You can pick and choose and decide. I'm going to solicit them all because I can't. And because that's going to just bring, you know, look, I have a real estate team, you know, and so I've got several people that can work on this and make money at it, not just me. So that's why I'm going to, I'm going to hit it all. You find okay. some really, really great opportunities by doing this. And look, there are times where people are going to call you mad. They're going to be angry. And I love those. Those are my favorite because all I did was notify them you know, that they're on a naughty list. I didn't put them on the naughty list. I'm just telling them they're on the naughty list. And that's what I say to them. Look, sir, I get it. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just going off of what's out there as public record. So if I know about it, your friends know about it. So maybe it's time for you to do something about it because all we've got in this world is our reputation. And then they're like, oh, you're right. Everyone's looking around for the foreclosure list, you know. So that's I think that's like a lot. There's a lot of fish there trying to trying to get after that list. I'd like this list is better. Well, I, think, this list. I think I think all this is good. I was going to say I mentioned in the chat. I think if you do download a massive list like that, that you should have a search or find function when you open it. Yeah. So just look for a street, you know. Put in Polk, and everything yes. on Polk should show up. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Dave. And and that's true because it's going into an Excel sheet. So we can source and sort and filter everything that's going into an Excel sheet. I appreciate the transformation of the mind. Patricia Thank Ann, you. your volume. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> New word, volume, volume, volume. It is volume. It is volume. Um, you know, it, volume is 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 where it's at. That's why I have a team. You know, to to do the volume and and not pick and choose necessarily. You know, I've the opportunities of just soliciting this list that have come to me for other business has been amazing. Um, you know, so this lead this opens up a conversation about anything you want to have when that person reaches out to you, and that's what I love about it. I've listed massive commercial property by soliciting this. You name it, I've done it. I have found land for myself to buy and develop and turn into large projects off of this list. Um, so it, it's just another way, you know, and I've shown this just a, a handful of times. This is the, the biggest group and, and now recording this video and putting it out that I've ever shared this with. And a few people I showed this to in real estate, I would never do that. Well, okay, then don't, that's okay. This is just an idea. It's an idea. When somebody comes to me, you know, you all, I was a broker for, I've been in this business 24 years, 22 and a half years. I was the principal broker. I had the agents on my license. And every time an agent came to me and said, I don't know how to make it in this business. Um, there's so many ways, right? There's so many ways. And so that's where I try to find ways for everyone to succeed. And this isn't going to be for everyone. But if you're a volume person, if you like the investment side of things, if you like selling properties in as is, where is condition, if you're not worried about, you know, the, the if, you, if you're not scared to work and if you've got grit and grind, you'll make it at this. I think a lot of people have a, a stigma against, you know, having their sign on a piece of crap property, um, you know, but here's my thought on this. You know, the niches are in the riches. And this would be a great agent attraction tool as well. I mean, uh -huh. you start, you start, people start saying, you know, how are you doing this? Yeah, and uh, you know, I'll be happy. You know, join, join me, and we'll get in. You know, we'll get into a conversation about it. But you know, throw them a couple bones every once in a while for referral fees, just to get their, get their, you know, 
wet, you know, get there. Uh, Absolutely. You know, whatever. Yeah, it's great. Well, and Paul, I got a comment about the sign. I, I had a different, uh, I had different signs made for this, this side of the business. Uh, and it was funny because Tim and TJ were in, in the office on Monday and I showed them that because I, we were listing so many properties that my typical real estate sign, you know, was, it was going to, I mean, I would have had to have ordered $10,000 worth of signs in a minute. So I went and had corrugated ones with the, 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 the thin stakes printed just to get them out quickly because by the time we'd put the sign in the yards or on these properties, we already had them sold anyway. Tim, you had your hand up. Yeah, two questions. Um, can you talk about the logistics and, and back to your scenario where you've spoken to the seller, they've got all these liens and they're willing to basically just give you the property for what they owe. Uh -huh. Talk about the logistics at that point. Are they quick claim de deeding it to you or are you simultaneously negotiating with the city on what they'll take for that lien value, pennies on the dollar, and then simultaneously do a closing? Because obviously I'm assuming those liens are public record and filed against that property. So it's not going to right. without them being paid off. So that's talk correct. About that just for, for, for a second, please. And I have one more question. Thank you, Tim, for bringing that up. And Tim's right. You know, if they're willing to sell it for what's owed on the city liens, you you do. You have to negotiate those liens because I can't take title to the property without making sure that those liens are going to be released because I want title insurance and title insurance isn't going to insure it unless those liens are fulfilled. And so, yes, I'm simultaneously negotiating with the city, uh, but the seller has signed an agreement to that effect. And as soon as those are done, we're sitting down and we are closing that property. I'm going to make one thing clear, nothing wrong with it. It's just the way I do business. I have bought every piece of property that I've ever, I've never wholesaled. I've never done a wholesale deal. I don't really understand wholesale. I mean, I, I do, but I don't go there. So every property I've done this with, I have physically paid for it and taken title. So I just wanted to put that out there, Tim. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, the second question is this, you know, 70% of my personal listing inventory for my entire real estate career has been expired in FISBOs. So mm -hmm. I did a lot of mail uh, and that's hugely successful up until about two and a half years ago. I, their properties aren't expiring any longer for the most part. Um, what I did, and, and I think I know the answer to this, but what I did when I ran across a, a landlord that owned 30 properties that he or she had on the market and they all expired because they were all overpriced, I sent one postcard. You sent 411 in this situation. Would you do the same thing again today for the impact that made? Or would you send one postcard to that person that owns multiple properties? No, I would do it for the same impact. It wasn't about the money. It was the it was the level of impact. It was that I yeah. know it, it was the moment of, you know, you got to think about it. And most people are this way. If they own 411 properties, they're a they think they're a big deal, right? Well, I wanted to be that big deal too, saying, I know you have issues with everything you own. So I would still do that. Now, now that we have so many other ways to obtain email addresses, I would probably incorporate that these days, right? Because I can look up anybody's email address. And so you can send it, you can email it. And guys, you got to remember too, you can pick up the phone and make phone calls. I just don't have time to make 17,000 calls today, right? So I'm going to do what makes the most sense. But the email factor we didn't do back in the day, that's what I would incorporate today for sure. But I would still send the 411 postcards because frankly, it's funny. Impact. It is. Thank TJ. you. That's what I thought the answer would be. So thank you for sharing that. <laughs> TJ. Yeah, Steph, um, I'm on that same site, and uh, it looks like this is probably, like you said earlier, it's a, it's a national thing that other cities pick up and whatnot, yes. so I'm sure a lot of us are probably seeing the same thing. Uh, my question is going to the actual record types. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that you clicked on was property maintenance cases. I'm curious about what else on that list that you may find useful, beneficial, whether it's foreclosure, demolition, zoning enforcements. What what else is the information in here that you could spin into an income, like you said? 
Yeah, absolutely. And so on that site, you're going to find building permits. So when somebody, um, you know, is is has filed a building permit, it's going to be on that site, whether it's a remodel, a renovation, a new construction, a new build. This is also where you're going to find planning and zoning applications filed. So you can see, hey, what's going on in, in my town? You know, who's developing what? Who needs this zoning? And then that way you can kind of see, um, you know, if if a developer's coming in and they're going to build 400 condos, hey, there's an opportunity to reach out and see who their listing agent is. Um, so all of that information is funneled through here. You're going to see the demolition uh, permits as well. You're going to see pretty much anything that has to do with someone filing any application as it relates to property, it's going to be on that site. Thank you for that, TJ. Thank you. And Maria, you put in the um, you put in the chat that those are not public in your city. I would I would venture to say they are. You just need to make a phone call and find out how. If if any of you get off of this today and you start doing the research and you can't find, pick up the phone and call your city and ask them the question, how do we find this? They are in fact public record. They are somewhere. Your city might charge to, to get access to that information. That may be the case. Not all do, some may. Pay the I money, want, it's not gonna be that much. I went to the um, city page on in my area and they didn't have a nice handy thing like you had, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I went to the public records search and they basically have a space where you can request what you're looking for with dates and everything. So, there you go. So that, you know, I'm waiting to hear back from them, I guess. Yeah, yeah. so I requested it. Um, They made me fill out like a public information form and I sent it in. I did everything they told me to do and they still, they didn't release the information to me. They said it's not public. Hmm. That doesn't make much sense at all. Um, I'd reach out. I'd reach out to. Uh, I'd read it, reach out to a commissioner um, or one of your council members for your city and ask that question. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comment? I was going to say sometimes it's really beneficial to go to the county or city office that it you're. Is concerned about and it's great to meet them in person kind of see the layout of the land there what they're doing and get some advice from them personally and then you know you might even make a connection that you know you can call that's right thank you for that dave and, and dave is a hundred percent right i got to know i still know and you know what my son can walk in there now and they know him because he's been there that often and that's a very good thing especially when you got to remember this is that what we're trying to do is, yes, create our living, but at the same time, it's a benefit to the city. We're cleaning up their property maintenance issues, right? They become raving fans of ours. They then start to feed you information that you didn't even ask for, but that's a good thing to have because this is all ways to get even more successful at it. It's so nice when people start calling you about this versus you having to source and find those deals and get it, okay? Good advice, Dave. Thank you. And uh, somebody asked how to get email addresses. I put it in the chat. White Pages Pro, I think it's $19.99 a month. You can get email addresses, cell phone numbers, all kinds. There's a lot of services that offer that. I've had White Pages Pro forever, so I keep using it and it seems to work. Anything else? Tim, any other comments? No, I mean, th this is freaking awesome, Stephanie. I mean, th this is a whole nother income source. And I hope you all see that is that, um, I mean, that nobody should be complaining about lack of inventory because this is an opportunity to go out and create as much inventory as you want. 
That's exactly, it's thank you for that, Tim, because it's right. Every time somebody complains and what I really want to say, I can't say, but you know, when I hear that there's low inventory, I need to put my license in escrow or I can't do this. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you all, there's so much inventory out there. And these people are screaming. You know why, you know, they're screaming because they're allowing themselves to be fined left and right every single week until they fix the issue they're not fixing the issue take that as as the as you know for a fact they are screaming for help now all you got to do is respond that's all you got to do respond go okay. make something happen let's all come back in a year and go holy crap we're all millionaires because we just listened to stephanie one day Stephanie, everybody was quiet because they I found myself doing what probably what they're doing. I, I was already in the city records. <laughs> good, good. Well, that's what I want you guys to do. Go experience that. We'll do, you know, maybe what we'll do is 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 we'll keep track of everybody on the group call today and we'll do like a follow-up in a couple of weeks, like a round table where we just get on together and just see what people are running into. Uh, you know, see what what issues you need help with. I mean, that is what we're here to do. Pour into you so that you all are making successes in many, many more ways than just the typical way of doing real estate. Look. Oh. I'm sorry to Every, ask you so many questions. Go ahead. Okay. Is it, you know, with people that we're trying to recruit, I mean, I, I'm a, I've am i been looking at other places prior to joining EXP. I don't see this type of training at ABC. Not at all. Right? Not at all. No. You know, so Not at all. This, Not, share this, this, this is on my, guys, this is on my YouTube. This will be on my okay. YouTube channel later today or tomorrow. When it goes live on YouTube, it gets posted in Freedom Team on the workplace group. So you'll know that it's it's live. Yes, share that out. Absolutely. You know, you make, look, I share and, and Tim and so many of us on this call, the reason why we share is because we've been there, we've done that, and we know what works. There is not, no one person can do this alone and be successful. So why not share it, arm you all with every bit of a way to be that realtor that thinks out of the box, and, and completely surpasses what your competition is doing. They don't know how to do this. Their brokers won't even know how to do this. And, and, and it's just nothing that people think about. Um, you know, no one shown that showed this to me. I stumbled upon it because when I got really heavy into the short sales, you know, back in the eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and so on, there was constant code enforcement stuff coming up. I had to learn about these, these liens and these fines that people were getting on their property. So I went and did some investigation. And then lo and behold, me spending 30 minutes in the office of property code enforcement in downtown Louisville, they showed me, well, here, you can look this up. Well, here's how you find this. Well, here, and I'm like, oh my God, I got the best education because I asked one question. So now I'm just sharing that back with you guys today. So. Awesome, and you, you say all. you're willing to hold our hands, right? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can do this. We we will. We'll get a mastermind you scheduled. Got, you got a paddle in the other hand. <laughs> we'll we'll get a mastermind scheduled where you guys dive into it. You know, see it through. Do the work send out the the mail or do the emails and do the phone calls do all three put it to work for you and i'm going to end today with one thing if a 20 something year old can do this with absolutely zero experience at ever buying anything by god you professionals can do it too. okay